Spendthrift Farm introduces new for 2019, the Safe Bet Program. Read to a fourth year stallion and watch his first crop of two year olds have measurable success on the track in 2019, or you won't owe the stud fee when your foal is born. Visit spendthriftfarm.com slash safe bet to learn more. Spendthrift, the breeder's farm. Hi everybody and welcome to Keelan Babies, presented by Spendthrift, the Breeders' Farm. I'm Dan Ullman along with Nicole Russo and let's take a look at race number five. This is the second division of maiden special weights for two-year-old fillies, obviously going four and a half furlongs and this race kicks off a 50 cent pick four. Spendthrift Farm, our sponsor, represented by the 1A My Donut. Spencer Stallion, Temple City is the sire of My Donut, and the number 11, A Wicked Wildcat, is sired by Spenthrift's first crop stallion, Wicked Strong. Let's take this field in program number order, Nicole, beginning with the number one, Twyla May. Twyla May by Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner New Year's Day, doing pretty well with his two-year-old first-time starters, 16% winners. I look at the bottom of this pedigree, though, I see a lot of route influences, I see a lot of turf influences, and while this horse does have a couple of bullet workouts on the tab, I wonder if she may want a little bit more ground. Yeah, you know, I kind of think so. Certainly you see Kitten's Joy there as the broodmare sire, and you think route, and you think turf. You think the same when you see the sire of sires there, Street Cry. New Year's Day did win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but he really came on later in his two-year-old campaign. You know, he wasn't an April or May sort of two-year-old. Uh, so I really do think that the combination of everything, Twyla May might want some more ground as well. The number 1A is My Donut, this one by Spendthrift Stallion Temple City, and a half-sister to a multiple juvenile stakes winning dirt sprinter in Bella Shamrock. The dam has been very productive. Four winners from seven runners, including a debut winner. The third dam is a champion, and it looks like that April 3rd work came in company with Night Bright, who has entered in the first division, so you may want to see how Night Bright does before making your final determination on my donut. Yeah, that should offer you a lot of clues. And I do want to point out, as always, that you can pick up a lot more context on these horses and the work tabs by picking up the clocker reports from our team daily through the Keeneland meet. Uh, Temple City, I certainly see him. And I think, uh, you know, of a little bit more distance and of turf. But as you said, uh, you know, some precocity in the female family and a very classy female family. Speaking of a classy female family, we'll move to the number two, Naabeth, who is seven to five on the morning line, trained by the great Wesley Ward, who seems to dominate every year in these four and a half furlong uh, dirt sprint dashes at Keeneland. This is a half to Soldat, who I believe won the Fountain of Youth, a half to My Selection, who is a stakes place sprinter. Tell us a little bit about Carpe Diem and what to expect from this first crop stallion. Well, Carpe Diem is very much expected to be good early with his two-year-olds, and buyers are responding as such to them at this year's two-year-old sales. Uh, this one herself was a $230,000 yearling. Uh, Carpe Diem worked very well as a two-year-old at the OBS March sale when he sold, went on to sell for seven figures. Um, you know, the son of Giants Causeway, expected to have two-year-olds that kind of follow in his mold and as you said this is a really classy female family sold at yes did win the fountain of youth on dirt but he was a graded winning two-year-old on turf as well and carpe diem sure loved keeneland he won the breeders futurity at two the bluegrass yep. at three the number three is kertara a 22 hundred dollar yearling nice pedigree though the dam a half to november slew who was graded stakes place sprinting the second dam november snow we've talked about her she won both the test and the alabama the same season for trainer alan jerkins kurtara had a built-in excuse for her debut it was a very wet sloppy track um she just was very green she never changed leads she passed a few tired horses late i think she can build on that performance but i'm going to wait for another race and maybe more distance uh, definitely more distance i think we've talked about the stallion raison de tat by ap indian out of the terrific mare sightseek 
they both wanted distance. Raison de Tat wanted distance. His offspring want distance. Kertara, I thought, ran better than expected in her debut, uh, making up some ground late. But she was a little bit outrun early. And, you know, I, I really don't think you have the time to be outrun early in these four and a half furlong races. I don't think this is her game. Uh, I do think she's going to improve with distance. One of the interesting alternatives to our morning line favorite is the number four, Diamonds R.A., a daughter of Kentucky Derby winner Street Sense, who clicks with 12% winners with two-year-old first-time starters. But the dam was a two-year-old stakes-winning sprinter on synthetic. This pedigree got a big update last week with Lady Apple's win in the fantasy. Yeah, a, a good amount of class uh, in this female family. The family does a little bit of everything. We've talked about it uh, being a distance-oriented page. Lady Athol's from the extended family of Affirmed as well. Um, this one, you know, kind of a nice steady work tab. I like the foundation under her for Ben Colebrook. But looking at these connections, I do think that maybe they'd like to get a race into her to build on. Uh, I, I do think that she would be a nice alternative at a price uh, to the favorites. I think this is a classy looking filly, but I do think that she might improve with the experience under her belt. The number five is La Rosa Drive. This is a daughter of Discreet Cat that sold for $1,500 as a yearling, but the Dan was a debut winner, as was the second Dan. There's a grade one stakes winning router in Shadowcast deep in the family. A couple of these workouts match up with Chapman's Annabelle's Drive, who's entered in race number three. So again, you may want to check out Annabelle's Drive's race before making your final decision on La Rosa Drive. Yeah, and you, this one uh, has got a couple of bullet works at the Thoroughbred Center, including a couple where track uh, conditions didn't seem optimal. Uh, so this one, you know, may be eligible to come out running early with Kent DeSormo aboard. The six is Baytown Vivi, Tennessee bred, $7,500 yearling buyback. This one just didn't do any running. She was put in a pretty tough spot, though, on April the 10th against the boys. Uh, just no speed, no improvement, beaten 34 lengths. Perhaps dropping back in with Phillies, she'll improve a little bit, but you're going to have to do a lot more. I think so as well. Uh, that being said, I do think that it was a very tough spot she found herself in. I think Alec and Arthur, the winner of that April 10th race, was very well meant. I think the runner-up, Johnny Unleashed, and we'll talk about him when he comes back. I think he's going to come back with a much improved effort. Um, I thought it was a really tough spot to land in for the daughter of Revolutionary, who, who's a nice two-year-old sire by a two-year-old champion. Let's talk about Wesley Ward's other runner in here the number seven Owlette. This is a daughter of first crop stallion Frack Daddy. Frack Daddy did good work on a synthetic surface. There's a lot of synthetic and turf on the bottom of this pedigree. But again, Wesley Ward, very dangerous with any two-year-old. And it's interesting that John Velasquez takes the call here. Yeah, you know, John Velasquez taking the call for Wesley Ward. And if you get anything close to the morning line on this horse at four to one, I would take it because I think she's very well meant. Uh, Frack Daddy, a son of Scat Daddy, who did a little bit of work on everything, was grade one placed on dirt, could also run on turf, was a graded winner on synthetic. Um, Frack Daddy, a first crop son of Scat Daddy. Uh, of course, Scat Daddy, such a great sire and two year old sire and we're starting to see him come alive with his young sons of course the likes of no nay never who was europe's leading freshman last year some turf in the female family as well and all of that versatility in the page makes me think that this is a horse that wesley ward definitely has pegged for some of the big uh spring summer events in europe and to get to there you've got to graduate first you know you you have to be well meant first time out and so i do think outlet is very well meant and might offer you some value the number eight is alexa g 20 to 1 on the morning line daughter of kentucky derby winner Animal Kingdom, this filly broke best of all in that April 4th race, but just didn't have the speed of her uncoupled stablemate, Mean Sophia, who just ran off the page and hid. No disgrace that Alexa G was beaten by that runaway winner. I thought she ran well, and I would expect with a similar break, we'll know Alexa G early. 
Yeah, you know, I certainly think that, you know, she might factor in here with the experience. We always say with these two-year-olds, experience counts. That being said, we talked a lot about Alexa G before her debut and the overall impression that her pedigree gave by Animal Kingdom out of a nice street crime there. We thought the overall impression was that she might want distance. She might want a surface change. That I still kind of feel that way. That being said, um, she's one of a couple in here coming out of the Mean Sophia race. There are a few in our first Keeneland Babies race of the day, race number three on Wednesday, coming out of the same race. You could perhaps use them to help you evaluate here. The nine, all about a princess, a daughter of Flashback, also coming out of that Mean Sophia race. The dam won 16 times. She was a true race source. All about a princess broke okay from the rail. She showed some speed. She was just out sprinted by Mean Sophia. She saved ground throughout. It took her a while to change leads, but she just missed the place by a nose. All in all, a solid effort. Very solid, and I think she's eligible to move forward for sure. Flashback, a nice two-year-old sire by Tappet. As we've said, Mean Sophia just ran off and hid from them, and this one only beat in a nose for second. The number 10 is an Oklahoma bred. It's Polly Tiz, a daughter of Pollard's Vision, who wins 10% of the time with his two-year-old first-time starters. Polly Tiz, a $3,500 yearling buyback, but the dam won a couple of sprints. The second dam was a winner at two, eventually a multiple stakes winning dirt router. This barn likes to give him a race, doesn't win often with first time starters. Maybe Polly Tiz next time at Churchill Downs. Yeah, perhaps. And you know, that's what I was going to just going to say. I don't think any sort of record like that is an indictment on the class of the barn. I think it's just a sign of trainer intent that they're not necessarily coming out with these horses fully cranked first time. They're letting them get the experience. The 11 is a wicked wildcat by Spendthrift Stallion Wicked Strong, who has already had a winner at the Keeneland meet, his first starter being his first winner. This is a $3,500 yearling. The dam was a multiple stakes winner on turf, but was precocious enough to win it too. There is some precocity on the bottom of this pedigree. Your low profile connections are gonna ensure a gigantic price, but this filly better come out running from an outside post. Yeah, and you know, a nice solid work tab underneath the horse. Maybe she has some foundation in her. Uh, Wicked Strong, we've talked about, sort of surprised me a little bit with some of, uh, you know, with some of his early horses at the sales with his first winner here at Keeneland. Uh, Wicked Strong by Hardspun, I really expected him uh, to have offspring who developed with distance and even with age as he did, really coming along late in his two-year-old year, early in his three-year-old year. That being said, Hardspun is by Danzig, of course, the sire of good good sprint horses, good two-year-old sires such as Warfront. So maybe some of that precocity is coming through a little bit in hidden fashion there. We kick off the 50 cent pick four with race number five at Keeneland, the second division of four and a half furlong maiden specials at Keeneland on Wednesday. Where are you going? You know, uh, I'm I'm gonna let maybe Wesley Ward beat me with the favorite uh, Nary Bath because I also because I really like his other horse Owlette quite a bit here. As I said, I think she's well meant for a number of reasons, and if you get anywhere close to four to one on her, it would offer huge value. Um, all about a princess. I'm actually I'm surprised that as one of the horses with experience in this race and and a placing in her first start that she's held at ten to one on the morning line right now, I think she could really improve off that effort. In Ward I Trust, I'm going with Naya Beth over Owlet in race number five at Keeneland. Unfortunately, kind of a chalky opinion. Again, race number five is an approximate post time of 318 Eastern, and it is the second of two Keeneland Babies races on Wednesday. Keeneland Babies presented by Spendthrift, the Breeders' Farm.